It is one of the toughest and tightest races in the whole country, and it could shake up the balance of power in Congress. Christy Smith versus Mike Garcia facing off in District 27. It's actually the third time Smith and Garcia are going head to head. And joining us now live in studio is Christy Smith. Thank you so much for being with us. We had Mike Garcia with us just last week. We're going to start off by asking you the very same question that we asked him, which is what is the biggest difference between you and your challenger, Mr. Garcia? Sure. I mean, we're miles apart on a lot of different very important policy issues. But first and foremost, uh, in a lot of our voters' minds, is reproductive freedom. Um, he's someone who's been incredibly extreme on that issue. But he's been right there with the rest of the Republican caucus on things that are dangerous across the board for our district for Americans. Their recent talks of, of cutting back on Medicare and Social Security, you know, safety net programs that people have paid into over their lifetimes that they plan on their retirement uh, for. So uh, we are miles apart on that. We're miles apart on climate. Um, and the votes, frankly, that he's taken for the district have been bad for our voters. Well, let's talk about abortion because that's the first thing that you brought up. Um, clearly, we know that you are pro-choice. We know that he is pro-life, but there are some that might say, look, we're in California, yeah. and California is not going to be outlawing abortion anytime soon. Right. We got gas prices through the roof. We've got all these other issues. Why is abortion the, the thing that Democrats keep harping on? Sure. What do you say to that? Well, first and foremost, abortion and access to contraceptives is very much an economic issue. We live in a country where there is not national paid family leave. We have a broken child care system. We have gender-based pay inequality. So for women of childbearing years, this is very much an economic issue. So they can take that off the table. But I think the GOP, in realizing that they were in trouble heading into this election cycle, really retreated from their hardline positions. My opponent is one of those people. His name is on a bill that becomes the national roadmap for a na nationwide abortion ban. And there's no retracting that, even, as much as they'd like to try and scrub their website. Nonetheless, we, we understand that abortion is uh, top of mind for a lot of people, but so is those gas prices, to Absolutely. Alex's point. So yeah. how do you see yourself helping uh, stop that inflation. Sure. Well, I'm completely supportive of the president's move right now to release some more oil from our strategic oil reserve, and that has help to bring down the cost a little bit. I think we're going to have to reevaluate our position with OPEC and our stances on domestic production versus what we get from folks overseas um, to make sure that we have the energy security we need as we continue a transition to a clean energy economy. But I, I absolutely understand this is really tough on families right now, and I want to be part of the solution of, of doing everything we can. Uh, so we invited you to do a debate on our political show, The Issue Is. Right. You accepted. Mike Garcia did not. Right. So when he was here in that seat a week ago, we mm -hmm. asked him, why not do a debate? Right. Here's what he said. This is the, the third go around here. We've done uh, several debates. Uh, they've, they've all ended poorly for her. I think her supporters don't, don't want me to debate her either. Uh, what, what's your reaction to that? Uh, my reaction is in the prior cycle, there was only one debate that Mike Garcia agreed to, and it was a Chamber of Commerce debate. And because of COVID, we were virtual. Um, we heard from folks who were watching very carefully that he was getting help while he was in that virtual debate. He has been in another forum with you me. Mean via Zoom, he's yeah. maybe having notes or something. Exactly, like had yeah. notes or something like that. Um, prior, we had had a Cal State Northridge debate where it was the whole field of primary candidates. He knows uh, full well what I'm capable of in a debate, and it would be to hold his feet to the fire on a lot of things he's being very dishonest about. Well, here's the thing. This is your third time running for this seat. Right. He he won, but only by what? Just over 300 votes. 333 last time. votes. 333 votes. Uh, but still, he won. Mm -hmm. And so, what's different this time? Well, the district is different. You know, we've had redistricting across the country as a result of the, the decennial census, and uh, this community now no longer includes Simi Valley, which is a very Republican stronghold in the district. But most importantly, he has a voting record now. When I ran against him before, he was a relative unknown in political circles. He's now gone to Washington, D.C., and from January 6th, where he refused to certify election results on, he has consistently voted against the interests of this district on everything from reproductive freedom, to gun safety and issues that really matter to our voters. You speaking of January 6th, today the January 6th committee subpoenaing right. former President Donald Trump. They want him to talk to them by November. If Republicans win the House and you get in the House, you'd be right. in the minority. Republicans would shut down the January 6th committee. Right. Uh, where does that go? And what do you do on that front 
as potentially a member of the House and potentially a member of the minority in the House. Sure. I mean, it would, it would be a significant blow to democracy, to our democratic institutions, and to people's faith in the rule of law. Nobody is above the rule of law in this country, including a former president of the United States. So it would be highly partisan um, and a, a very poor decision were the Republicans to shut down an ongoing investigation of what was clearly an attempt to overthrow election results. You win the 27th, 27th district. What is the f number one thing that you're going to do when you first start? I'm going to get in there and along with the president's help and blessing, we're going to make sure that we codify the protections in row and then we're going to move on to keep strengthening this economy and make sure it works for everybody. All right, Christy Smith, good luck on the campaign trail. I know it's going to be a very busy few weeks. Absolutely. Uh, but it's we, going to be calendar's fun. Calendar's packed. And people are already voting. People have the yeah. ability to vote right That's now. Right. If people want more information on where they can get a ballot, register to vote.ca.gov has information around the state as well. Nice to see you. Thank you. you. Good Thanks to see so you. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, thank <laughs> you. Far away. <laughs>